Hello everyone. Welcome to the next episode of the ABAP question answer series. Today, let's start our uh, session and let us see some new questions over here. So the first question of today is what is development life cycle in SAP? What is transport? And uh, it's actually what is transport request? and when to use customizing and when to choose workbench request. So development life cycle is very simple over here. First, the things get developed in the development system, then it's transported to the quality system, and then it moves to the production system. Sometimes the pre-production system will be also there, you know, and after the pre-production, you can have one production system, okay? So in the pre-production system, user tested over here, user acceptance test, UAT can be done over here in the pre-production system and then finally in the production system, things is finally go live. There are two types of transport request, the answer of the second question. Okay, first, what is the transport request? So transport request is nothing like uh, when, uh, you know, when we have to transport something, we require a truck, right? We require something to transport truck or some uh, some vehicle we require. Similarly, when we do some development in development system, we must have that vehicle. That vehicle here is known as a transport request. In this vehicle, we we put all the codes, all the artifacts, all the objects, and we move to the another system. And then from here to here, here to here. Once the things get tested in quality, again with the same tier, we move the uh, here uh, into this system. And again, we, in the same tier, we just just keep on releasing. We just release automatically. Tier goes to here. We just release automatically. Tier goes over here. Okay, if something specific is there that need to be done by the uh, basis team or by the solution manager, there is a tool given by the solution manager that also used for the purpose of transport management. Okay, the tra transport request, what's the, uh, there can be one another question over here, what are the important T codes which can be useful in the transport request. So what are the important T codes for transport management? Okay, so we have the T codes over here, AC09, AC10, AC01, these are the T codes which we use for the transport display, for the releasing, for creating the task and all. These are the T codes we use, okay? There are two types of transport request. One is the workbench. So under the, so, so the another question can be, what is the workbench transport request, okay? What is workbench TR? So workbench TR, when you go and create some uh, program or when you go and create some table definition, from the SE11, right, or view definition, or some data element definition, right, or some domain definition. Whenever you create any object, okay, whenever you create any object, all the object is going to be stored inside this a workbench, all the definition kind of stuff, whether you are going to create the report, or table definition, or view definition, all definition kind of stuff and report, function module, you know, function group, everything will be get stored inside this workbench request. On the other hand, customizing requ request comes into the picture when you have to enter the entry into the table. But again, when you are going to put the data into a table, there also you can have two types of option, okay? so. There also it can ask about the workbench request and customizing request. So generally, whatever the transaction you are going to, whatever the entry you are going to maintain with the SPRO transaction, there it will ask for the customizing. Suppose from SM30, you ha want to maintain some table, there also it may ask for the customizing request. But again, it depends on the scenario. What option, uh, like uh, what kind of table, uh, data it is there. So if the table data you have under the data 
uh, you know under the data category if you have chosen uh, sorry under the delivery category we are having the delivery class right under the attribute and maintenance when we create the table there we have the very first option comes the delivery class so under the delivery class you have chosen over there the customizing you know two option uh, comes over there right a c l g and all such kind of so if you have chosen the c over there if you have chosen the c over there not a if you are going to choose the a that means that means master data or transaction data in case of master data and transaction data it will ask for the workbench request but if you are going to choose the c over there and if you have enabled under the tmg a standard recording routine then it will ask for the customizing okay and if you have chosen over there the a then uh, and and if you have enabled the standard recording routine inside the tmg then it will ask for the you know a workbench request okay so and this is the answer can be okay now here i will just show you that uh, you know uh, this is the uh, sc09 from where i have taken this screenshot okay so you can see what is the transport request and what is the task so the answer of the transport request transport request is like a, uh, you know like a, uh, the engine of the train you can understand engine of the mal gadi and these are the task under the different task you can put your artifacts so the, the second is the task one under one main transport request under one main engine there can be many task attached there can be many bogie attached within a uh, with a engine like a train okay so this is the main engine main transport request and this is the uh the the lower portion this is the task so this is the task so this is actually uh the thing so you can tell that within a transport request there can be multiple tasks and the task is the actual uh, and task uh, task is created with user wise suppose means under a same under a same transport request multiple user can create their own task okay under the same transport request multiple user can create a same task but in a one task multiple user cannot you know uh, one task cannot be used by the multiple user so this thing you know you can tell in the interview if someone is asking however this is not the frequently asked question whatever the frequently asked question is there i will put over there the vvi that need to be a more focused okay this is just for the knowledge purpose and suppose if they are going to ask you can give the answer so here we can write what's the difference between what is the difference between tr and tasks okay this can be a valid question right this can be a valid question so let's give the answer of this question nicely okay so here we will write the transport request and here we will write the task so this tr tr is like main engine of the train okay with 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 which with which multiple bogies are attached right multiple bogies are attached here uh, let me check some spelling mistake seems bogies i think we have to write like this are attached here the task it is like you know baggage of the truck which is attached with a main engine okay main engine is here tr okay so all task is not having their independent you know uh, relevance all the task is going to be attached with a uh, tr okay 
the second point this is the first point okay and the second point here we can write it that uh, uh, the same thing over here 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 just let me write it the same thing means that is that is one TR can have multiple tasks okay and here that is one task can have only one tier okay and this is the important point now the second point over here is uh, under one tier multiple user can work okay can work but but here under one task only one user can work at a time okay at a time okay. under one tier multiple user can work at a time okay this is possible but under one task only one user can work at a time if suppose another user want to work with the same task the task need to be assigned to the second user then only will be able to work but in case of TR it is not the case right so this is the important question which uh, you know uh, you know we, we, we have to remember another thing uh, all the another thing which is important that uh, TR can be released only when all the tasks are released okay here the third question the th third point actually we can write there is the task is no dependency you know on the TR task can be released independently task can be released independently okay task can be released independently so these are some important point you can tell the difference between TR and task here under the TMG uh, here the question can be like this what is the significance of a standard recording routine okay so this is a screenshot from the TMG when we clear the TMG screenshot from there I have uh, taken right AC 54 the transaction for the the transaction for the TMG where we create what is AC 54 right and from here I have taken this screenshot if a standard recording routine we have selected then only it will ask for the customizing request or the workbench request based upon the delivery class what we have selected under the attribute and maintenance okay so this is important point this the first option should be selected then only it is going to ask so the question over here what is the significance of a standard recording routine okay so the significance of the standard recording routine is that if it is selected then only the you know uh, TR is going to be asked otherwise TR will not be asked when you are going to maintain the record in the SM30 this is the point so let me give the answer for this okay if this is selected then only the TR will be asked when you save the entries from you know uh, when you save the entries in TMG right uh, by SM30 correct SM30 okay so, so this is the thing
so sometimes you know when when you save the entry in TMG it will ask for the TR and sometimes it does not ask the TR so it will ask the TR based upon this okay if it is selected and it will ask for the customizing tier when you have chosen under the delivery class the customizing entry and if you have chosen the uh, you know master data and application uh, master data and transaction data that means if you are chosen A then it will ask for the workbench request okay uh, fine now the another question is what are the main data types in ABAP okay so the main data types in ABAP is uh, uh, generally we are having the two kinds of data type in ABAP one is the elementary data types and another is the user defined data types under the elementary data types you are having the numeric data types and the non numeric data type under the numeric data types you are having these are the important one FIPX okay F means float I means integer P means packed X means hexadecimal okay under the non numeric data type you are having the character data type numeric data type date data type time data type and a string data type okay once again I'm going to repeat this one F means float data type float and data type so this is used for to denote a number exactly so 2.7889 if you want to represent exactly the fractional value this float data type is going to be used and it always represents in the scientific format okay a standard scientific format so here it is we are having the integer data type and this we are having the packed data type packed data type and here we are having the hexadecimal data type okay hexadecimal so this is the thing here we have already written it over here okay so these are the important data types another question what are the numeric data types in a BAP? correct so here the, the same thing under the numeric data type we have a little more elaboration we are having over here so what are the numeric data types in a BAP uh, give the answer in detail give the answer in detail so little detailed description over having numeric data type I integer integer 1 2 3 like that minus 1 minus 2 minus 3 by default initial value will be 0 the length you know here we are having if it is 8 bytes this is the maximum one in 4 uh, into 1 into 2 in 3 in 4 like that you know? so it can be maximum 8 bytes length over here it is by default right justified okay and here the float data type here you can see that actual precise value it is showing right right justified packed data type here the length is from 1 to this is right depends on the uh, length this this value right justified and the hexadecimal over here so the hexadecimal we don't use generally it's the internal representation right so uh, this is the thing we'll stop it over here and we'll meet tomorrow with a new set of questions and answer thank you bye bye have a nice day